Well, Merry Christmas. Oh, thanks, Shirley. <laughs> I bring greetings from our Senior Minister, Pastor Bill Vasilakis, and uh, he uh, wishes us all a Merry Christmas as well. I want us to have a look at some really popular movies. I don't know if you've been hitting the Christmas movies list. Um, is they sort of rerun on TV quite often. So let's play those now, guys. Let's have a look if any of these are familiar. Who's seen Arthur Christmas? Who watched it this year? Oh, there we go. Some of you might have watched all of these. Now, that's impressive. Okay, next one. St. Nicholas VeggieTales version. Lockie Donaldson, I reckon you would have probably seen that one quite a few times. No? <laughs> okay, next one. Oh, Peppa's Christmas. Who loves Peppa Pig? Oh, Abby, you love Peppa Pig. Cool. All right, keep going. Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas. What a classic. Who's seen Elf? Fan, not a fan? <laughs> Some people are like, no. Okay, next. Then there's the Muppets Christmas Carol. I mean, I could have put quite a few. There was like some that had 40 different Christmas carols. But anyway, The Grinch Dog Christmas. This was on TV last night, the musical, and they had very operatic singing. So we watched a little bit of that. <laughs> Shrek the Halls. I love Donkey. Home Alone. Who has seen that so many times? Who knows all the lines off by heart? Stacy, good on you. What about this one? Have you seen this one? I loved this movie because I think that so many other movies are funny and they're hilarious, but this one actually, it actually made me cry because I just thought about the way they told the story of all the animals wanting to come and worship Jesus, like Pastor Sam said, that was really, really impacting. Well, there's lots and lots of nostalgic things or things that make us feel nice at Christmas that we can do. Maybe, kids, you've had a family tradition that you've done some cooking or you go and see the lights, Christmas lights every year, or you watch a certain movie. But Christmas is more than just about nice things, right? Christmas is about, like Pastor Sam said, worshipping Jesus, the baby born to be king. And in the Christmas story, in the very first Christmas, there was lots of joyful things happening, but there was also lots of things happening that made people a bit afraid. And when we read it, we can understand that sometimes we get afraid about things happening in the world. And 2020 has been a year of deep fear and anxiety around COVID and all the different things that have been happening around the world. Heartbreakingly, many untimely deaths have occurred in Australia and across the world, and we grieve with those who will spend their very first Christmas without a loved one this year. But when we read the Christmas story in Matthew and in Luke, in those Gospels, we read about the birth of the coming King who would grow up to save people from their sins. We read about it and there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of anxiety and death in the, in the graphic accounts from Matthew and Luke's gospel. But it's also mixed with a lot of joy because God came as a person in history. Jesus himself came to be God with us. God visiting the earth, God clothed with human flesh. And who could have imagined such wonderful good news? It's amazing. That's, I think, why I love the star, because it captures that sense of wonder. It's amazing. Millions and millions of people right across the world worship Jesus and acknowledge him as Lord and Saviour at Christmas time. It's amazing because the one who created the whole universe, God himself, chose to come and live among us. And he wants to be with us. And he was born in a dirty animal shed. He was born to a teenage virgin and her earthly husband. He was born to be coming as king. And he was worshipped by everyday people, ordinary people, as he came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. He didn't come like a victorious conquering king. He came humbly and gently. He came to fulfil his great rescue mission. 
and be crowned king, but not with a crown of gold, with a crown of thorns. He came to die on a wooden cross to save us from our sins and remove this barrier that separates us from a holy God. And he was willing to die on a wooden cross and be buried in a grave for three days, knowing that he would rise again. He rose again to secure our freedom and our forgiveness and new life with God as our Heavenly Father. And He guarantees eternal life to all who believe in Him and receive Him as their Saviour and their Lord and their forever friend. This is the greatest news of all time. It's the greatest news in all the world. Those who are followers of Jesus here, would you agree with me? And it's the reason we can live with hope even when hard things or scary things or bad things happen. It's the reason we can say no to fear when it tries to paralyse us or hold us back or weigh us down or keep us from experiencing God's great love and power in our lives. This good news never gets old. It never gets old. I never get tired of hearing about it, of speaking about it. And I've been talking about this good news about Jesus for over 20 years. It's awe-inspiring. It's wonderful. It's mind-blowingly real as when I first gave my life to Jesus as a 19-year-old. But this morning, let's take a look at the different things that we can find in the gospel around fear and joy. In Matthew 1.20, Joseph was afraid. He was afraid to take Mary as his wife because he was afraid of what people would think. He knew where babies came from, adults. (laughs) But he was afraid, afraid of disgrace. But God speaks to Joseph in a dream. Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. And God again speaks to Joseph in a dream to quickly leave Bethlehem and Judea in Egypt when Jesus' life and Jesus' safety is under threat. And sometimes we feel afraid for our physical safety. Sometimes that happens. But in Matthew 2.13, it says, For Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. That was the time that Jesus was born into. In Matthew 2.16, it says, Herod gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under. Jesus was born in a time of oppression and violence. Herod dies, his son now reigns in Judah. And in Matthew 2, verses 21 to 22, Joseph, it records that he was afraid. Again, he was afraid to go to Bethlehem. He was afraid for his safety and his family. He withdrew to the district of Galilee, or otherwise known as Nazareth. And the Galilee is like the rural back sticks of nowhere. It's like not the cool place to go. In Luke 1.12, Zechariah was afraid when he saw an angel. Imagine seeing an angel just rock up, standing in front of you. Zechariah was startled and gripped by fear, but the angel says... Do not be afraid. And Mary was afraid. In Luke 1, 29 to 30, when she saw an angel, Gabriel, she was afraid. She was like, what is going on? She was greatly troubled. But Gabriel says to her, do not be afraid. In Luke 2, verses 9 to 10, the shepherds were terrified But the angel said again to them, do not be afraid. So there was a lot of fear happening. And maybe in your life this year, kids and grown up kids, there's been fear happening. There's been times when you've been greatly afraid for your family, for your personal safety, for the things that are going on in the world. And I believe God's message to us this Christmas, just as it was to Mary and to Joseph and to the shepherds and to Zechariah, is do not be afraid. Because we have someone who has come to be with us. 
In Luke 2, verses 10 to 11, we see this joyous good news. But the angel said to them, the shepherds, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the anointed, the promised one, the Lord. And a lot of people at that time are looking for a saviour. They're looking for a leader who is going to help them politically. They're looking for someone who is going to answer all their problems and set them free from Roman occupation. They're looking for political freedom. Other people were looking for a leader who was going to provide for them and meet their physical needs. And Jesus certainly did that. He actually went around healing the sick and helping people who were troubled and who were afflicted by sickness and oppressed by us, spiritually oppressed. He went around and did lots of things to meet people's needs. But the message of Christmas is not that Jesus is a political leader. It's not that he is a, just meets our physical needs. The message of Christmas is that he is a personal saviour. God has come to be with us. And that's why we don't have to be afraid. This announcement by the angels to stinky, ordinary, undeserving, rough and tough shepherds was the, that the arrival of a personal saviour, a personal Lord who will deliver all people from sin and from death. And you might think sin, that's not a very popular word today. What does that mean? Well, the Bible talks about sin in three ways. Sin is to cross the line, to know full well what you shouldn't do, but to do it anyway. Sometimes we sin that way. Sin is also, the Bible gives us a picture about missing the mark when an archer is trying to shoot an arrow and it doesn't hit the bullseye. That's another picture of what sin is. We just can't hit perfection. And the third way that the Bible talks about sin is to ignore our maker's instructions, that there is a maker, there is a creator who made us for himself and for his purposes. And to ignore him is to just... Live as if his will and his purpose and he himself doesn't even matter. And all of us, if we're honest, have sinned in these three ways. And this sin is a barrier that separates us from a holy God. But God so loved you (laughs) and every person that he made that he sent his son, Jesus. Jesus is God in the flesh, God we can see, God in human form. And he came to set the world right. He came to die on a cross, not for his sins, but in our place to take God's punishment and God's anger at our sin. And after he died, he was buried. But the amazing, amazing news is that three days later, he rose from the dead. He's actually alive. Jesus is real. And after he rose from the dead, he appeared to some of his followers and then he ascended to the right hand of the Father and he sent the Holy Spirit, his actual presence, to be with us. The Bible says he didn't leave us as orphans, but he promised to come to us. And he's come to us in the person of the Holy Spirit who is here right now. In Luke 2 verse 13 to 14 it says, Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. The good news, this joyous good news in the midst of an environment of fear (laughs) is that Jesus came for God's glory. He came to show us what God is like, to show us the greatness of his love, his mercy, his justice, his kindness and his faithfulness. And that the way that we receive this good news is that it comes to us by grace. Grace is God's free unmerited favour. We can't earn relationship with God, but Jesus removed the barrier. And when we put our trust in Him, when we say, I believe upon you, Jesus, and I receive you, we can start a brand new relationship with God, free from sin, free from forgiveness. When He looks at us, He sees us as His beloved child. We might still struggle with doing wrong things, but more and more as we look to Jesus, we want to be like him and we have this new power in operation in our life 
to obey him and follow him. The removal of everything that separated us from God comes through a cross. It cost Jesus his life and his blood was shed for you and for me to bring us to God. And peace with God is now possible because of what Jesus has done on our behalf. If you're here today, you haven't ever made peace with God, become friends with him. He's already (laughs) done everything necessary to be friends with you. In Matthew 1, verse 22 to 23, it says that she, Mary, will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. Do you know what Jesus' name means? It means God saves. Because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And maybe you're here today and you've come with a friend and you're just like, I'm all about the turkey and the presents. Like I'm at church because my family asked me to come and I'm doing them a (laughs) favour. That's okay. (laughs) But if you remember nothing else from today, remember this, the two names of Jesus. Jesus, it means God saves. Emmanuel, it means God with us. Jesus saves us from our sins so God can come and be with us. Whoever believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life. God came to us in Jesus. He is God with us to save us from our sins. And God the Father can only be experienced. I talked about people looking for a political leader you know, as an answer. I talked about people looking for physical needs. You might have physical needs. You might feel like, oh, if there was just, you know, world peace across the world, you know, and people were able to get along. Well, it actually starts with every person and an individual human heart. And we can't know and experience God the Father up close and personal until we allow Jesus to deal with the sin issue in our life. And we allow him to deal with the sin issue in our life by receiving his forgiveness, which is offered to us for free. We can't earn relationship with God. We certainly don't deserve it. But he loves us and he gives it to us for free. When you receive him personally, when you believe upon him and say, Jesus, I want you to be my saviour. I want to follow you. You are my Lord. You begin a brand new relationship with him forever and ever. It's an unbreakable spiritual lifeline relationship with God that will never end from now into eternity to be with him in heaven. And when he comes into your life by his spirit, he never leaves And despite the ups and downs that you might face and the difficult times, even as difficult a time as COVID has been, you are promised to experience real peace, abiding joy, lasting, unbreakable hope. Because his perfect love casts out all fear. And I just believe that's an encouragement For some of you here today, you've been fearful even about going into 2021. There's been a dread, a fear, a worry about that. And I believe God's word to us today is to receive his love again or for the very first time. To know that his love casts out all fear. Joseph, Mary and the shepherds all had to let go of trying to make sense of life and God on their own. They had, had to surrender their independence. They had to let go of their self-sufficiency. They had to lay down their self-centeredness and turn from living for themselves to live for Jesus. To worship, receive, welcome, and follow this baby born to be saviour and king. And the question for us this Christmas is will you He offers you an invitation to know him personally, to let him lead you. Will you? 
And if you have, will you reaffirm that? Why don't we pray together and do that right now? Jesus, we know that you're here with us by the power of your spirit. And so as we're talking to you right now, we're actually in your presence. And we are just so thankful that you chose to come. You didn't have to. You could have left us to our own devices and there'd still be this barrier between us and you both now and We'd be separated from you and all that is good for eternity, but you chose to come. Jesus, God saves. Emmanuel, God with us. And you want to cast out any fear that's been running amok in our lives this year. I just take authority over any fear that's been bombarding and assaulting your people. I say go in Jesus name. Let the peace and the love and the presence of Christ just banish for you now. If you're a Christian here today, just receive his love and his grace again. Receive it. Thank him for it. Rest in it. (laughs) His favour rests on you. And if you've never, ever given your life to Jesus Christ, you've never received Him personally as your Saviour and your Lord, today is your opportunity. I sat at an Easter presentation over 20 years ago and I didn't understand everything about what the preacher was saying, but I understood for the very first time that God loved me, He knew all about me and He wanted a relationship with me. And I remember saying, if that's who you are, God, I want you. I don't know the answers, but I want you. And you can say that to Him today. Kids and big kids. Just now in your heart, you can say, come into my life, Jesus. I believe on you. I want to follow you. Thank you for dying in my place for my sin and removing the barrier that was between me and God. And thank you that I can now know God as my heavenly Father. I receive you, Jesus. I thank you for your grace. And I want to follow you. I need your help to do that. So would you help me by your Spirit? In Jesus' Name. Amen. I just really believe there's some people sincerely praying that prayer this morning. And if that's you, do you want (sighs) to... Mate, there's a party going on in heaven for you right now. There's angels rejoicing and God the Father saying, it's not loud enough. That's, this is awesome. My son and my daughter has come home to me. And if you did make that decision, you're now my brother or sister in Christ. And this is just the beginning of what it means to follow Jesus and begin a brand new friendship with Him. And we'd love to support you and help you. Pastor Sam's going to share a little bit, more, bit more about how we can do that. But can we stand? And can we adore Him this morning? That beautiful carol which says, Oh, come, let us adore Him. He is worthy of our adoration. He is worthy of our praise. Not just with our song, but with our lives. Can we adore Him? Can we lift our hands to Him? Can we worship Him together this morning?